If he is using one side, why we spinning the other end? Well, what a waste of power. We should definitely fix that. Well guys, jokes apart, but our bench grinder that's powered by an induction motor is a lazy ass. Don't like to move and as we throw something in there, it loves to stall. So that's going to be our take on designing and building a powerful bench grinder by recycling an old hoverboard. We started by disassembling a broken hoverboard. This self-balancing scooter is powered by a pair of permanent magnet brushless hub motors that are integrated within the wheels. Next to that is a gyroscope that senses the tilt angle and communicates to the main board that controls the direction and speed of each of these motors respectively. Not only does it offer a pair of censored brushless motor controllers, but the whole thing can be reprogrammed for a variety of applications. Now more on that later. Well, on the other side we have got a 36 volt lithium ion battery pack that's rated at 4.4 ampere. So we are going to use this battery pack to power our bench grinder later on. This setup can offer decent efficiency and can save us time and money. So we have decided to recycle most of the parts. To do so, we have designed our bench grinder. The main body is going to be made out of 6 mm thick metal sheet that's going to serve as a motor mount and houses the rest of the stuff within. The motors will be mounted on either ends next to which is a pair of bed to rest the working piece. Now to cut down all the pieces we stick their two dimensional layouts on the metal sheet and started cutting them using our angle grinder. Not only this 6mm thick sheet is going to provide the required strength but we are later going to tap threads to hold parts like the bed holder. The bed holder is made out of 20mm square metal bar as it's going to offer rigid support on either ends. It's made out of 4 pieces that are going to be welded together. Later we sanded these parts on our DIY belt and disc sanding machine that we have designed and built in our previous project video. The link to that is on the top right corner. Later, we tapered the edges to get the welds deep enough to ensure rigidity. Once we finished all the pieces, we placed them over two dimensional layout to make sure everything falls right in its place and held them together using super glue. The next step was to weld all the joints. To hold everything together we need to drill a bunch of holes into the metal parts that we have built earlier. To do so we have used a 5mm bit where we need to tap those holes with 6mm threads eliminating the need of extra nuts to hold everything together. We salvaged the stock motor mounting from another broken hoverboard. Recycling fever? Well, you guys can say that. With a bit of sanding, the motor mountings are ready. With that, most of our basic part for the structure were ready, but we made a bit of changes to the design. Initially, the design was to sandwich the motor mountings between the main plates and the rest of the stuff will fit around that. To further strengthen everything, we decided to build a metal enclosure around one of the plates and place the motor mounting above that. So we chopped some more metal and later welded that around the edges of the front plate. This design tweak offered more rigidity and we can now secure all the electronic components within the housing. Later we drilled through holes into the motor mounting as now it's going to act more as a spacer. To hold the motor assembly, we drilled and tapped the main body with 8mm threads. To repurpose these brushless motor, we have to modify them inside out. As we undo those 6 screws on the rear plate, both the stator and router comes apart. The motor hub needs to be machined from the front so that we can mount the disc attachment to the face plate. 
we machined the face plate on a lathe and also made this grinding slash buffing disc adapter with 24mm threads on one end. To mount this adapter to the hub motor, we drilled 6 holes across the adapter right into the face plate. Later, we tapped threads into the adapter plate and enlarged the holes into the face plate. The second modification had to do with the motor speed. Since our existing bench grinder is a slow speed one, so we need more speed out of this one. With this stock speed controller and battery, these motors are going to offer nearly 700 RPMs, but we are going to need three times as much, which means that we can use our traditional hack with these hoverboard motors, and instead of just rewinding the whole stators, we can rewire them. These stators have 27 poles. 9 for each phase as it's a 3 phase brushless motor. Currently each phase goes through 3 set of poles all of which are connected in series. If we somehow connect these 3 sets in parallel, the current will take one third of the time to travel across each phase making the motor goes 3 times as fast. To implement it as swift as I've explained it, we have designed a PCB to rewire the state of winding. Here I would love to thank GLC PCB not only for making this video possible but also enabling us to pull this modification up to the standard. GLC PCB is one of the largest PCB manufacturers around the globe providing one of the finest quality PCBs right at your doorstep. All you need to do is to upload your Gerber files, go through a bunch of options there and you are done. Usually we receive our PCBs within a week and as you can see their quality is exceptional. So I'll drop down their link in the description below. Go check them out for your customized printed circuit board orders. Now before we solder the PCB in place, we had to expose the termination points by removing enamel coating from the magnet wire. The PCB was then soldered in place, making sure all the connections are right. For more details about this project, check the links in the description below. Now with that being done, our motors and the rest of the unit is ready to be assembled. But before we do that, it's time to paint all the parts. Once all the parts are set to dry, we started working on the control board. This board offers a pair of censored brushless motor controller, each of which can provide 1800 watts of peak output. With the stock firmware, the board controls the speed and direction of motors relative to the tilt angle that's detected by a pair of onboard gyros. Since this control board is programmable, so we can add features like different modes for speed control to work with a variety of discs and materials. But for now we are going to keep it simple and drive both the motors using simple switches. Once we flash the firmware to the control board, it was time to assemble everything together. Once the whole thing started coming together, we then mounted a 10 inch grinding disc on one of the motor 
and a 12 inch buffing disc on the other one. To test this grinder we have mounted it to a heavy duty vise and to power it up we are going to use the same battery pack that we took out from our hoverboard. To ensure safe operation we have also added a pair of plexiglass shields. As soon as we turn on the grinder both motors quickly achieve their maximum speed. Now both the grinding and buffing disc are bigger than our previous grinder but still the motor seems to handle them without any issues. This thing eats whatever you are going to throw at it, even our old bench grinder. We tried the wire brush to remove rust from a stained metal part and that also seems to work up to our expectations. The grinder seems to vibrate a bit and that's because of the unbalanced grinding disc that we are going to balance as you are watching this video. I hope you love the build so stay tuned for more awesome DIY project videos and if you are still here consider subscribing and hit that bell icon.